The Tarverian Podcast is a production of the We Can Make This Work Probably Network. Please check out more of our shows at www.probablywork.com. Too Young for This Trek, The Final Frontier. These are the voyages of MC, Troy, and Eric. Their mission to introduce Tyler to strange new episodes. To seek out the best and worst media in the Star Trek franchise. To boldly go where several podcasts have probably gone before. You can listen to these goobers talk about Star Trek by searching for Too Young for This Trek or by visiting probablywork.com. Rejoice ye one and all, as the dragon has returned for season two of the Tarviran podcast. Please join Rich Arbara, Rob Alfor, Bill Kulfrain, as they take on the epic fantasy series of the Wheel of Time. This season is dedicated to the Great Hunt, so join us as we go on a mystical adventure following the travels of the great Paul of Valera in this season of the Tarvira Podcast. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Tarvira Podcast. And uh, do you know, I just I should just record an apology that I can just play at the beginning of every episode. So you know, I'm always sorry for not getting episodes out to you. No, um, <laughs> guys, ah, oh, guys and girls, just I'm so sorry, and and non-binary people, of course. Uh, I'm just so sorry. Like I just, it's so tough these days. You know, uh, I know many of you who know me know I do other podcasts and stuff which I keep up with as well, um, and it's just been so hard to balance the workload of podcasting plus my real life workload plus you know kids family and all that um my uh, my little girl's not been very well recently you know not nothing terrible just a bad bad cold but when you when a one-year-old's got a cold and they've got a tiny nose and they're all snotty and they did they only sleep for like 20 minutes at a time because they can't breathe probably you know it's just like and you end up getting like one or two hours of sleep oh man i'm just i'm just destroyed but yeah also also my workload has been obscenely <laughs> off the charts recently at work so i don't want to make too many excuses i know rob's been having his problems too uh, but he's also he's got a brand new podcast that he's doing i'm very proud of him for breaching branching out on his own you know you're my boy Rob you're my boy and also you'll be pleased to know as well I had a session with Rob last week we 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 considered recording an episode but instead we had a big session last week where I went and helped him through his audio issues because his mic's been sounding really off recently it's been like really bassy and tinny and uh yeah it just hasn't been sounding like his top quality self like it used to so yeah we had a big session last week where we went through and fixed all of his settings to make sure that he's sounding absolutely chef kiss so, Rob, if you've touched anything, I'm going to kill you, all right? Yeah? Don't change your setting, all right? You sounded fantastic on that Final Fantasy Seven episode. Don't touch a thing. Anyway, <laughs> you're not here to listen to me ramble on about other stuff. You want to know all about the Wheel of Time, don't you, people? Well, first up, let's go to the Wheel of Time news, shall we? Because for once, for once in my life... Mm-mm, 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 there's loads, tons of tons of news has come out in May. It's just unbelievable. Um, first of all, season one has definitely wrapped up, so it is finished. And they've also planned in season two, and they've started filming. I think. <laughs> I think they've started filming. They definitely, they've definitely got some filming dates in line. But yeah, that's it. Season one is a wrap. I think when they say wrap, that means they finished all the filming parts, if I remember rightly. 
It doesn't mean they finished editing and all that sort of stuff. So we still don't know an exact date it's going to be coming out. But guys, guys, theories. When you are releasing something like The Wheel of Time, and you know, the hype behind this will be next Game of Thrones sort of stuff. So definitely, I reckon the first season at least will be very, very popular. A bit like, say, um, was it American Gods? First season of American Gods. I was so pumped for that. I watched the whole thing, loved it. Second season came out, I forgot it even existed. And I was like, oh, uh, yeah, but <laughs> didn't watch it. <laughs> so, you know, uh, definitely not going to happen to me a wheel of time. Just loved this series so much. But yeah, you know, one of the things that they like to do is they try and make money off the back of these type of things, don't they? I, mean, <laughs> I know, I know. You're, all your minds are blowing right now. What? They, they don't do this just to entertain us? They're trying to make extra money off of us. Yes, people, they are. <laughs> Open your eyes to the lies. Uh, although they don't realise, it's just a thing. But anyway, uh, there is a scheduled release, a reprint of the first books. <laughs> I want to say first books. I think, yeah, I think there's a scheduled re- uh, reprint of The Wheel of Time, uh, Eye of the World, scheduled for November. Now, you know, think, think of what all your Game of Thrones books looked like before the TV series came out. And then think of what they all look like when you see them in the shops and shelves now with the TV show. And it's got like the same titles that they have. You've normally got that weird girl with the white hair on the front. Stuff like that, you know? It's, that's what, that's definitely what they're planning here. So I've got a feeling we could be looking at a November release for season one. Because I think they'd like to tie that in. They'd release the season, maybe get two, three episodes out and then boom, there's the book everyone wants to buy it or maybe even have the books on the shelves before it comes out so i'm i'm thoroughly expecting a november schedule release uh for season one you know so that means me and rob have to get our socks on and think what the fuck are we going to do for the tv show when it comes out um now i don't know if anyone's listened to my uh, attack on titan podcast which i did with tyler where we originally watched all uh, we originally read through the manga of attack on titan uh, to catch up to where the TV show was. And then for the final season of the show, we watched the TV show each week. And then we took it in turns, occasionally did an episode together. Uh, we did the last episode together. I think me and Rob may follow that type of format for the TV show, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, we're supposed to be following that sort of format for the book, but it's not going too well at the moment, is it? So hopefully we'll pick up the pace. You know, you never know. You might start getting two episodes a week from us. Wow, imagine that. Imagine, imagine, imagine the glut... The glut of nothingness that you've had for the beginning of 2021. And then suddenly, wow, I get two episodes a week. <clears throat> yeah, actually, that's good. Actually, I'm quite fond of that idea now that I thought of it, you know. So one week I would read the chapter from the book and Rob would do the chapter from, and Rob would do the episode of the TV show. And then the next week I'll do the chapter of the TV show, uh, episode of the TV show and he's a chapter. But that's a fantastic idea. Let me talk to Rob about that before I uh, tell him he's got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, more news, more news. So uh, there is Mark Fletcher has been cast. I don't know who he is, uh, <laughs> but he's going to be a warder of some sort. Uh, he's got, I recognise the face, you know, but I don't know who these people are in in all seriousness. Uh, There's some other stuff that came out. There was like um, uh, the episode two title was, re- was revealed, which is going to be called A Taste of Solitude. Um, and also apparently... Uh, Miss Planet, Czech Republic, is also going to be in the Wheel of Time. She plays a tinker. So uh, look forward to seeing uh, Tamilla Sparrow, who is a very good-looking lady. Uh, Yes, (laughs) she's going to be on your TV screens very soon. And that's it for Wheel of Time news. But next up, people, do we have any reviews? And you'll all be glad to know you're going to be spared from Danzig this week. (laughs) Um, Now... This isn't technically a review, but we got a comment on one of our YouTube videos. So, <laughs> sod it, it's close enough. So, uh, so yeah, uh, some someone named uh, jo- uh, Jose, 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 Jose. <laughs> Why can't I speak? Jose uh, Pombal asks, "Hey guys, thanks for your work in this podcast series. Are you coming back for book two? Uh, now, for reference, for those of you who just listened to the podcast." Um, you know, we do put the podcast up onto YouTube, but we'd completely forgotten to put any of our season two stuff on there. <laughs> we just, yeah, just, just completely slipped our mind. So uh, I think Rob's now got the uh, the mid-season counter catch-ups and also 
the uh, what's the other one? Uh, he's also got the prologue episode up onto YouTube, so that is continuing. But I think he's also doing about as good a job of keeping up with that as I am with keeping up with putting episodes out on the main feed. So, yeah. Anyway, you know, you are going to be spared from the Billzig this week at least. I'm going to give you that one one reprieve with a with a small YouTube comment. So yeah, anything, guys, any type of feedback to us, be it on Discord, email uh, at tarverinpod. <laughs> gmail.com I'm <laughs> sorry about that um, uh, you know Twitter just give us some feedback wherever you want I, it will save you from the Billzig I'm not just going to keep it down to iTunes reviews but oh man I just, I'd just i love some more iTunes reviews you know if I'm honest <laughs> iTunes reviews is where it's at so if you can give me an iTunes review that would be absolutely one differous perfectness yeah see I know I know some big words yeah superfluous winged and useless <laughs> anyway Oh god, why, 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 why am I just so full of nonsense? Why does all this like vomit just roll out of my tongue? You poor, poor people. I don't know what brings you back each week. I thought, well, you know, once every month and a half, <laughs> whenever we get an episode out. <laughs> oh god, this is like the worst podcast ever, isn't it? Uh, anyway, my wonderful people. So we covered the news. We covered iTunes reviews. Uh, I believe it's time for a word from our sponsors. Hello, my name's Bill. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm here in the UK doing UK things, not being eaten by giant people. And I'm Tyler in the US, also not being eaten by giant people. And we host The Coordinate, an Attack on Titan podcast where we are... Uh, hold on a second, Tyler. Hold on. There's some weird noises going on outside the door. Let, let me just go check it out quickly. <sighs> It's Twitter, Troy Titan. Ah, ah, my leg. Ah, he's eating my leg. Ah, Bill. No. Mm. Oh, oh, it's gone. He's eating my bloody leg, Tyler. Troy's eating my f-ing leg. Oh. Uh, I- anyways, uh, we're a monthly podcast where we read ah. an arc of the manga oh. a month, try to get Bill caught up. Uh, Bill, you want to tell them where they can find us? Uh, what? What? You want? What, what, what do you want? Where can people listen to the <laughs> podcast? I don't. Uh, oh, I don't have a clue. Oh, he's going to eat me! He's going to eat me! Oh. Ah. Oh. Why are there so many cats in here? Oh, God, I hope you uh, get, can I get a new co-host? No, Kid Rock, get out. Get out of my head, Kid Rock. You don't don't belong there, right? Yeah, I know I, know I saw you once in Germany. You were shy. Get out. Right, anyway, <laughs> where are we? Uh, oh yeah, we're supposed to be covering up chapter 15 of The Wheel of Time, book 2, The Great Hunt. Probably my favourite book. And this is chapter called Kingslayer. So, we've got some funky stuff going on in this chapter, people. Funky, funky stuff to get to, okay? So, where do we start? We start with Rand, Loyal and Huey. And they are following the very faint trail through this very unknown land. It is like they've gone to sleep after taking a bunch of mushrooms that they found underneath a tree and they've woken up in a weird, spacey Alice in Wonderland type place. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, but no, it's not like that. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, it's just they're they're going across this horrible land and they're just completely silent, not talking to each other because it's just like, man, this place, this place is eerie as fudge, you know? Some serious, serious eeriness, and um, and yeah, it's just, uh, it's just it's just so creepy. Like Rand says, you know, he's looking at a hill, and it seems like it's trying to slide towards him, and it's making him feel really dizzy and out of sorts. And he'd like to be wrapped in the void, but even that is something he just wants to avoid right now after it smashed last time, and it kind of made him feel a bit sick and jolted. So you know, it's not it's not looking very good and uh, Hurin's doing the same thing he's kind of just focusing on his task of following the trail um, almost as if if he follows the trail he won't have to look at the land around him and Loyal is just completely like focused in on his own self he's not really paying any attention to anything else that's going on around him he's just kind of like you know really really zoned in or zoned out I mean, I'd zone out too. I'd be like, oh man, I'm never going to leave this place Uh, but you know, one day one day they'll get out (laughs) Or do, or do they? Is the rest of the book spent in this weird land? Who knows? But um, but yeah, but they got these weird burn marks all throughout the um, all throughout the place. Now I've kind of you know haven't read the series. I've got a vague idea of what I think these might be, 
but also it seems bonkers that that's what they might be. And I don't know if it's ever really explained what these burn marks are. But they're kind of thicker in the middle than they are at the ends. And they always go from east to west, never north to south, which is really, really odd. And um, <clears throat> it makes Rand think of a guy called Walt from back in Emmons Field, who used to paint his carts. And he used to do the same thing on the edges, where he would go along very lightly with the brush and then just push down. So it made a bigger, thicker line, then up again easing off to make a thinner line going up and down all the way along um, and it's if someone had streaked the land with a monstrous brush of fire that's what he says but also these fiery marks like there's no burn smell it doesn't feel like it's burnt like it's just it's just weird it's just weirdly burnt just the whole thing looks dead like the whole the whole place just looks absolutely dead there's no birds and there's no animals anywhere it's like the whole place is completely devoid of any type of life you know even the water like they you know Rand says the water's safe to drink but that's about all he's got good to say about it if you haven't got anything good don't say nothing at all you know that's what Rand's mother might have said if she hadn't you know uh, I can't say all that because that would be spoilers um <laughs> <laughs> oh, nearly lost myself there, people. That would have, that would have got me some hate mail. Um, yeah. Something about Rand's mum. Rand's mum has got it going on. Do, 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 do. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, so what was I? Oh, yeah, the water. Uh, it's safe to drink, but he says it's tasted flat as if it's been boiled. And it's just like, yeah, you know, him and Hurin just neck it back. Just like, yeah, this is this is water. At least I can drink it. You know, their flasks are beginning to run empty anyway. And Loyal looks absolutely disgusted. And so do the horses when they take a drink. They're like, what is this filth? Where is my rose water? Oh, I am a horse from Faldara, don't you know? I, I'm used to the finest rose water drinkers I am. I, I assume that's how the horses from Faldar sound. Anyway, um, <laughs> and yeah, it's just like he says, you know, there's no, um, he's, yeah, like there's no animals, there's no life, you know. The, the water's completely still. The horse is treading it, and it like kicks up a bit of mud, dirt around them. But there's nothing there. There's no like water. There's no like water spiders. There's no little tadpoles anywhere, um, or what those little insects that sort of crawl across the top of the water. Oh, it's a water spider, isn't it? <laughs> you know, there's none of that sort of stuff, and it's just creepy, creepy as. And then um, there's also this weird thing as well where Rand keeps seeing um, <clears throat> uh, he keeps seeing these really unnatural clouds in the sky, where they're like completely straight. And he's just like, no, it's just too straight to be natural. Like, what? what is this? Like, I'm not going to mention it to everyone else because it will freak out here in a loyal. But yeah, man, these, these clouds, these, these clouds are bothering me. And then, everybody, we get the really cool bit of the chapter. Loyal. <clears throat> he suddenly just, you know, stops riding, gets out and just walks over to a tree. And then he begins to sing to it. And it's not like the other, it's not like the Ogier tree songs Rand heard before either. Um, Loyal kind of explains, you know, the, the talent for tree singing has definitely faded amongst these people. And he's kind of like one of the only few Ogier left now who still has the ability. And we saw him do it before at the end of Eye of the World, but <clears throat> Rand seems to think he's singing a different tune this time. <laughs> um, the song seems more like pure music, uh, pure song, music without words. And he sings it and he's kind of humming it along to himself. And then Loyal touches the wood from the tree and the branch of the tree seems to respond to, to his touch and to the song. The song also, Rand seems to think it's really familiar as if, I, I know this song, like I've heard this song somewhere before, but where could he have possibly heard it? Like I say, it's not the same one that Loyal sang at the end of Either World. It's different. But Rand seems to feel like a memory is being drudged up from somewhere that he knows this song. Um, and Loyal starts singing, rubbing the rubbing the, the wood. <laughs> Loyal's rubbing his wood up and down. Um, <clears throat> that's <what> I was... <laughs> um, <laughs> Honestly, a penis joke was not in my notes. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Um, but yeah, he starts rubbing. He's <laughs> I can't say rubbing the wood. He's rubbing the branch, and um, the branch is responding to his touch. And where there was branches at the end it seems to just coil down into this big hard nubbin at the end oh man just yeah <laughs> anyway he, 
<laughs> I can't can't carry on. He's he makes a big staff basically <laughs> out of this wood, um, and as he begins to finish his song, it almost sounds like he's saying thank you to the tree, um, and yeah, he kind of sits back in his sit yeah he sits back in his horse and he's got his big tall staff. It's as tall and as thick as him, thick as Rand's forearm, smooth, polished, and then Rand goes. <gasps> Oh, it's a quarter staff. I didn't know all uh, Ogier carried weapons. And Loyal says, "Yeah, do you know what? My 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 mate back at home, I can't forget his name, Elder something, uh, would always say that he was being impetuous and you know that he shouldn't have to do this. And uh, apparently, the cost is too high. So I don't know what the cost is, and I don't know if this ever explained either. Like, what is the cost to tree singing and changing something from a tree into a weapon?" I assume normally the tree doesn't want to be made into a weapon. but And that's actually something that Loyal says. He says, it makes him feel weird because this land was glad to have a weapon to be made. It's just like, what? <laughs> the land's happy about it? Um, yeah, so anyway. Court staff in hand. You know, he's finished. Loyal's finished polishing his wood. And... <laughs> Uh, Rand gives the order for him to start riding again to, in order to keep up with the Dark Friends and so now it's Hurin's turn to have some story deposition <laughs> yeah it's just like you know Rand did his bit at the beginning uh, Loyal's just gone off and uh, yeah done, done what he did you know he knows what he did <laughs> and, and Hurin's just like hey Rand guess what um, this trail is really strange and it's just like what do you mean and he's like, well, you know, it's like it's not like a real trail. It's almost like I'm remembering it instead of smelling it. There's like, oh, there's like there's loads of other trails of violence crossing their path. And he could have sworn this morning that there were hundreds slaughtered right under his feet, but there was nothing there. And he said, you know, I know this sound really strange, but it's more like I'm remembering where the path that I need to follow is going rather than actually smelling the path. It's kind of like a a weird sense that he's getting and you know it's it sounds suspiciously like slaughter of the villages of the trollocs in the other world so maybe they've gone back on themselves I just don't know but yeah he's just like hurin's a bit freaked out about it and man's just like come on we've got this we've got this hurin me and you bruv me you and you know that that, that ogre over there is having a wank uh <laughs> Um, so they make camp and um, Rand is, decides you know, I'm going to be first to make watch no, to stand watch because you know he's kind of uh, he didn't want to assume leadership role but he could see that the other two were just dying for someone to take it so he just did it anyway Rand you are you are falling into the trap man this is what this is what the ace die want you to be and, yeah, and you're just falling for it man you're just going into it aren't you you're just becoming the leader you know following the leader the leader the leader I'm in a real singing mood today. I'm quite happy. Um, yeah, so he starts to think of uh, Fane and he hears like this strange voice on the wind. It's never over, Al Thor. <laughs> now that's interesting because they use his name, Al Thor. So it's not Bialsmon because he always calls him uh, Farin or whatever his name is. Um, but yeah, so for a moment, so Rand decides to distract himself and he starts practicing all the forms that Land taught him. You know, uh, Parting the silk, that's it. Uh, uh, kissing, kissing the barmaid. Um, you know, uh, fondle behind the uh, bins. You know, smoking behind the bike shed. That's the one. Uh, you know, he's practicing all his sword forms. Uh, so he sits down again, and uh, after he's finished all of his forms, you know, he's hot, sweaty, but immediately he realizes where he is, and he's kind of that brief, almost relaxation from the situation's already gone. He's already like, ah, oh, flip, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so he kind of he starts to think of fame, uh, and he sits down again to keep watch and goes over, goes over everything, and he, he doesn't want the other guys to be woken. He wants them to have a nice sleep, so he what, he's sitting there just completely distracted and doesn't notice his strange fog just rolling. And when he does notice it, a man in black appears, cloaked in shadow behind a mask. Fire is in place of his eyes, and Rand. He's like, eh, Biazamon, brother! I thought you were dead! Uh, yeah, no, yeah, I'm pretty sure he shits himself. <laughs> um, Rand is like, oh god, this is a dream. It has to be a dream. I've fallen asleep. And then Biazamon laughs at him. And he's like, he knows Rand's name. He's like, yeah. Uh, ev- I know every name you have used through the age and after age. 
Long before, even long before you were the Kingslayer. Hmm, interesting. Thanks, Biasmon. Um, personally, I think Biasmon's talking shit. Like, I don't think he... I th- I'm pretty sure he knew, like... I'm pretty sure in context of the story, like, you know... I don't know where I'm going to do spoilers. Is that a spoiler? Oh, do you know what? Oh, do you know, my head is quite foggy today, people. <laughs> I had a, I had a, I had a COVID jab yesterday, and today I'm just feeling a bit all over the place. So, um, yay, jab! Everyone get jabbed, yeah. Join, join, join the revolution or the resistance. Yeah, join the resistance. That sounds better. <laughs> um, join the resistance, get jabbed. But yeah, oh man, it makes you feel a bit one, bit wonky the next day. Um, <laughs> I've been feeling a bit wonky today. Um, yeah, so he claims that they've been tied together since first, since the first moment. We are together as surely as two sides of the same coin. And Rand's like, no, you're the father of lies. All you do is lie, man. You lie, 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 lie. And he's just like, do I lie? Do the witches at Tarvalon, do they lie? When they also named you Dragon or whatever it was. And it's just like, yeah, he's just twisting everything. And Rand's even like, oh man, you just, you, you, you twist everything, man. You twist all of it. Even when you're telling the truth, you're twisting it to be a lie. And, um, yeah, I like the bit though where Bialsman walks over to Hurin and Loyal. It's just like, hmm, you always do find odd followers. <laughs> and then he's, he he kind of mentions, and then the girl who tries to watch over you. Who? I'm a bit torn if this is uh, Egwene or Moraine. Uh, I think Rand thinks he's talking about Moraine. But, um, but my initial reaction was, oh, he's talking about Egwene. Is Egwene always trying to watch over Rand? Uh, so yeah that, that was an interesting thing but I, I don't know what Robert Jordan was plugging at at that moment but very strange um, and so yeah he claims uh, again that Bielsman's lying you know you're always lying to me man you're always lying to me can't you just tell me the truth uh, Bielsman says uh, that they two have fought battle since the creation but the last battle is coming and if Rand dies it will be finished so yeah man this is like Really building up the fact that although the the wheel's been turning and repeating itself over and over again, everyone seems to think this is definitely going to be the last time. You know, once when when whenever we get to the end of the Wheel of Time books, that's going to be a nail in the coffin. Um, <clears throat> and you know, the whole time this is going on, Rand's kind of um, holding his sword, and we get one last refusal from Rand. And Bialsman causes the fog to catch fire. And Rand's sword glows as if it has just been born from a forge. Born or drawn? I wrote born. I'm pretty sure it should be drawn. <laughs> um, and, you know, Rand at this point hides in the void. He's finally summoned it. And he tries to cling to Sadin. In a t- uh, to Sadin. So the dark, the dark side of the one, uh, the man side of the one power. In an attempt to block the pain from the burning. Uh, I wonder if there's a non-binary version of the One Power. Hmm. Oh, that's an interesting thought. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know where we're going with that. Uh, uh, in an attempt to block the pain from the burning. And then suddenly everything's gone. And Rand's just back in the room. <laughs> He's back at camp. Hurin and Loyal are still asleep. And then Rand thinks that he imagined it. But then he suddenly feels the pain in his hand. And he finds that his hand has now been branded with the heron mark from his sword. So this kind of also indicates that if Rand did fall asleep, this was all a dream. Rand fell asleep holding his sword. Just just write it out. <laughs> um, so he wraps, wraps a handkerchief around his hand. And um, uh, he tries to... He thinks to himself... Uh, that he won't channel. You know, this is what Bialsman wanted to tempt him into, was to channel him, which he kind of did. And, um, yeah. And he just doesn't know, like, what Moraine and the Amlin seat wanted him to do. He starts questioning himself again. Uh, but yeah, it's just, what a chapter, you know. When Bialsman turns up, it's just craziness. Just like, I love that. I love that thing. And then the fact that also, this is this is finally it for Rain. Like, he didn't finish him off at the end of book one. He's still here. And there's a great line from Bialsman as well in this section where he says, um, uh, you cannot, kill, uh, something about you cannot kill me. So, hey, swords do no good against me, Louis Ferrin. You should know that. He's just like, what? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, he seems to think that you, he can't be harmed with a sword, which sounds absolutely bonkers. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, just great. 
this is a great little chapter to get through uh, when you guys are when you guys are reading it. Uh, loyal, polishing his wood, fantastic. Uh, again, this strange. I always found this strange land thing intriguing in this book. So love love the fact that they're in this weird thing that we don't even know what it is yet, but they're just wandering through it. I'm trying to find their way out. And then Bialsmon turns up just to basically goad Ran. It's just like, ah, still here. All right. um, <laughs> and yeah. Uh, uh, and as always, of course, try and attempt Rand over to the shadow with promises of immortality and shelter from the madness. Power could be yours and you can live forever. Something along those lines. And yeah, just constantly Rand wanting him to refuse, but also then Rand not wanting to go, you know, be the puppet of Tarvalon. So also trying to deny them. He's just trying to deny everyone, Rand. He's a, he's a bit in denial, I will say that. <laughs> um yeah and then that brings an end to this chapter kingslayer chapter 15 of the wheel of tomb wheel of tomb wheel of time book two so i'm going to hand you over to el roberto with readings with rob and i will just put in a prefix this was recorded before we fixed these microphone issues <laughs> so it may sound a bit basic um yeah okay over to you rob and now the taveren present to you Readings with Rob. Chapter 15. Kinslayer. I will not touch it. Rand felt the void around him. Felt Sadine. I, I won't. You cannot stop yourself. Leave me alone. Power. Balzaman's voice became soft, insinuating. You can have power again, Luz Theron. You are linked to it now, this moment. I know it. I can see it. Feel it, Luz Theron. Feel the glow inside you. Feel the power that could be yours. All you must do is reach out for it. But the shadow is there between you and it. Madness and death. You need not die, Luz Theron. Not ever again. No, Rand said, but the voice went on, burrowing into him. I can teach you to control that power so that it does not destroy you. No one else lives who can teach you that. The great Lord of the Dark can shelter you from the madness. The power can be yours, and you can live forever. Forever. All you must do in return is serve. Only serve. Simple words. I am yours, great lord, and the power will be yours. Power beyond anything those women of Tarbalon dream of, and life eternal, if you will only offer yourself up and serve. Rand licked his lips. Not to go mad. Not to die. Never! I walk in the light, he grated hoarsely. And you can never touch me. Touch you, lose then? Touch you? I can consume you. Taste it and know, as I knew. Those dark eyes became fire again, and that mouth, flame that blossomed and grew until it seemed brighter than a summer sun, grew, and suddenly Rand's sword glowed as if just drawn from the forge. He cried out as the hilt burned his hands screamed and dropped the sword, and the fog caught fire, fire that leaped, fire that burned everything. Yelling, ran, beat at his shoulders as they smoked and charred and fell in ashes, beat with hands that blackened and shriveled as naked flesh cracked and peeled away in the flames. He screamed, pain beat at the void inside him, and he tried to crawl deeper into the emptiness. The glow was there, the tainted light just out of sight. Half mad, no longer caring what it was, he reached for Sadine, tried to wrap it around him, 
try to hide in it from the burning and the pain. As suddenly as the fire began, it was gone. Ran stared wonderingly at his hand, sticking out of the red sleeve of his coat. There was not so much as a singe on the wool. I imagined it all. Frantically, he looked around. Balsamon was gone. Hearn shifted in his sleep. The sniffer and loyal were still only two mounds sticking up out of the low fog. I did imagine it. Before relief had a chance to grow, pain stabbed his right hand and he turned it up to look. There, across the palm, was branded a heron, the heron from the hilt of his sword, angry and red, and neatly done as though drawn with an artist's skill. Fumbling a kerchief from his coat pocket, he wrapped it around his hand. The hand throbbed now. The void would help with that. He was aware of the pain in the void, but he did not feel it but he put the thought out of his head. Twice now, unknowing and once on purpose. He could not forget that. He had tried to channel the one power while he was in the void. It was with that that Baal Zaman wanted to tempt him. It was that that Moraine and the Amelin seat wanted him to do. He would not. That was Readings with Ra. If there's a passage in an upcoming chapter you wish to have read on the podcast, Simply tweet us at Tavir and Pod with your request. And thank you for that lovely rendition of readings with Rob, Roberto. Uh, again, warnings, hopefully next week this will sound a little bit better. <laughs> Don't touch anything, Rob. You change any of those settings. I'm coming for your boy. So that's it, guys. That is it. I've actually successfully recorded another episode of the Tarviran podcast. And you, my dear wonderful listeners, have actually bothered to sign in and listen to it. So thank you very much for your continued patience with my nonsense and also terrible uh, schedule of actually getting things out on any sort of any sort of time scale that actually works or that I keep telling you I'm promising you. Uh, so sorry about that. But guys, if you want to reach out to us, again, best thing to do is to leave us a rating and a review on iTunes or whatever podcast catching apps you happen to be using. Uh, you can also join us on our Discord, which is dead as a dodo, but there occasionally people pop in there and say, hey, guys, where's the, where's the episodes? And I'm like, all right, I'll do one. <laughs> um, and then, you know, also you can reach out to us uh, at Twitter, at TarvarianPod. Joy, uh, uh, Yep, yeah, and yeah, just yeah, you know, loads of other things. Check out Rob's new podcast, the JRPG Century Club. Uh, you can check out my podcast, uh, which is Bill's JRPG Trappings, uh, Bill's JRPG Adventures, and other trappings. You know, we we both obviously seem to like JRPG, so we make podcasts about it. <laughs> uh, I'm currently doing Zelda Two, uh, which is uh, one of the most unique podcasting um, things I've ever done. I'm kind of editing together lots of different audio from lots of different uh, podcasters uh, as we all talk about our experience in each single dungeon of Zelda 2 which is obviously a, a bit of a black sheep of the old Zelda family uh, but it's, it's very interesting and it's a project I'm very very proud of and I think it's an excellent listen so um, if you do just just check I think you should just check that out anyway I think it's a very entertaining listen even if you don't like Zelda 2 or computer games or anything like that you know just check it out and then finally, uh, you can find us on YouTube as well. Uh, and there are just uh, many, many, many places where you can subscribe to us and join in the conversation. So please show your love for the pod where and where you can. And you know, remember, get those reviews in, get those YouTube comments in, get us uh, some sort of review on Discord or something, whatever, so you don't have to listen to Billzig next week when it's Rob's turn, okay? Yeah, you've all been warned, okay? anyway guys i am absolutely gasping for a drink and quite frankly this uh, bottle of water that rand's left me just tastes like absolute ass oh wait hang on oh this is what it was hearing as we march further on into the adventures of the great hunt we take a quick peek into each of the minds of the three farm boys from two rivers to see where their heads are at at the moment Wow, Perrin is so good talking to women. The way he handled Egwin, I wish I could do that. Man, I wish I was as good at women as Perrin. Man, Rand seems to know what he's talking about with them women. I wish I was able to be as good talking with women as he is. Man, I see Rand and I see Perrin and Lewith, they're talking to women. Boy, I wish I could talk to women like that. 
The only thing I'm good at is making women mad. I only make women pissed off. Matt really has a way with women. I don't know how he gets away with it, but I wish I had that same ability to talk to women like he does. I can't believe the way Matt talked to that woman. It worked out beautifully. I, I just I just get stuck in my words and, and, and they think I'm just slow, but man, Matt really has a way with the women. This has been a presentation of the We Can Make This Work Probably Network. Follow us on Twitter at ProbablyWork for more of our questionable content. Also, we have a website called ProbablyWork.com.